a six month long maharishika bharat dharma yatra 108 days of free open to all satsang 10000 kilometers of travel by road numerous locations the existential suffering of thousands reduced countless lives transformed forever become part of this chapter of history in the making maharishika with her sangha will travel from the ancient lands of parashurama bhumi in goa to mumbai from mumbai to the himalayas to rishikesh and beloved ma ganga from rishikesh crossing to the east to the land of the great goddess in bengal then down south to the sacred mountain of tiruvannamalai and from tiruvannamalai over mumbai back to rishikesh encircling bharat varsh the cradle of sanatana dharma please donate immediately to support maharishika's unrelenting call to realize self and act from source donate for this revolutionary teaching to reach millions the teaching that connects you to the guru within the source the truth the maha antaratman click on the link in the description box below to make your generous contribution to this epic yatra invite punya invite grace into your life as your ancestors did support the human quest for the truth i first met you in rishikesh uh, for one life satsang i think that was uh, in 2019 i was resistant to your teaching first but did not want to hear it uh i changed my mind uh, so recently i watched every video i could get on youtube and my question has to do with a conflict i'm in your teaching which i love very much and which i would love to put much more into practice because i feel i need to be in contact with my inner guru it's difficult for me because i already have a guru I've been initiated by Sri Ramakrishna Maharaj in uh, Nashik India uh, in 2017. Uh, he's a disciple of Nisargadatta Maharaj. Since then I'm practicing four bhajans every day and at least 2 hours of mantra meditation. And this mantra is very powerful. It brought up a lot of my own dark tendencies. I saw them so clearly and it's very painful. I experienced again and again that I would behave aggressively in contacts, so I just uh, pulled back, not to cause too much havoc. My question is, how could I find my inner guru? That's also what Maharaj teaches. You have to find your inner guru. That's the most important thing. Before you can be loyal to any master, you must be in contact with your inner guru. But on the other hand he says you must be loyal to the guru not just change gurus and go here and there so how could i realize your teaching of finding the inner guru following the, the inner truth first and still not go away from maharaj because there's an inner conflict well this is really a conflict i i i feel it's not a simple thing it's almost existential yes. so i would like to put into perspective first what you have presented so from what i've understood you have first listened to me some years ago yeah. i think 2019 you said and it was not a teaching which spoke to you you have a guru now who has been teaching you to or training you to get in touch with your inner guru you then have started opening up to my teaching which clearly speaks about the inner guru and now you have a conflict because if you have to move towards the inner guru you would have to also follow more and more of what i'm saying which is not directly perhaps in conflict to what your guru is saying but then how do you maintain loyalty to him right this is not an easy thing to 
mm-hmm. handle. I understand that dilemma that you're in. I normally tell people who have a guru, take permission from your guru and ask the guru if you can take up this practice. If you have a guru and if you feel connected with that guru and you love the guru, because the basis of Guru Vada is not a mental connect, oh, she's amazing and she has this brilliant teaching and she's this. It's about do I love her or do I love him? or not? Do I feel a deep, deep love and gratitude? If I do, then that person is my Guru and otherwise the person is not. So, if you feel that love for your Guru, you also have the possibility to speak with him, explain to him what is going on, explain to him what has happened and tell him that I told you that you should speak to him. Because if you leave him and you abandon him and you come and take up another teaching, I can't imagine then that things go very well for you because having a Guru is not just going into a supermarket and picking up the chocolate where you like the cover the most. It's it's a lot more than that and it's a commitment, it's a connection, it's a, it's a love. So, if you have that kind of relationship with him, then it's a good idea to talk to him. I mean, he he would understand your dilemma. In terms of the teaching here, I don't say that you have to find your inner Guru first before you can find your outer Guru. The steps are clear. As it is taught in the subcontinent over the millennia, and it was also taught in Europe and in all ancient cultures, it was first the bowing down to the parents, then it was the bowing down to the deities, to the gods, to whatever was considered supra-rational beings of power, and then it was the bowing down to the human version of the Supernatural, or the human representative, who was the Guru or the the Shaman, depending on what culture, and then finally that Guru would show you the inner Guru. So the parents showed you the Gods, the Gods showed you the Guru and the Guru showed you the final destination, which is the Antar Guru, the inner Master. So the Guru basically is here to direct you towards that inner Master. And that is what I am very clear about speaking here and also teaching. I show how to tune into that inner Master. And sometimes, depending on the culture you come from, you will have more or less of Guru Vada involved. Like say for an Indian, it's easier because it's culturally more familiar. For the Europeans, it's more difficult because there is a history of religion here and a religion which clearly stated that a human master is not what you should be aiming at because there is just you and the Divine and the Church makes the connection between yourself and the Divine. In such a case, of course, spiritual masters have practically no space or place. So after the advent of religion in Europe and the Middle East, there was a decline in the presence of spiritual masters, which is now of course changing as religion and its impacts decline in different parts of the world. So for you, in order to come out of that dilemma, it's best to talk with the one with whom you connect as a Guru, as a teacher, and ask him what he thinks, and then based on that you make your decision. Your question is also, is it possible to have two Gurus? Some people do have two Gurus, it's rare, but they do. They actually move from one to the next to the next. My advice generally to people is, till the age of 36 it's okay to keep on doing your Guru tourism, but at one point it's better to fix on one and then to flow with that, Unless, of course, it's a criminal Guru who makes you do things which go against the law of the land. That is not okay. First step, talk to him, see what he says, ask him if you can take up this course of practice, 
And if he's in agreement, you can take up this course of practice. If he's not in agreement, you need to think for yourself, what is it you're going to do? Apart from which, regarding mantras that bring up... that bring up the... you know... the dark side of you, there is actually no dark side, that is simply ego that is revealed, and it is important when ego is revealed to move past the ego to the core of the being and to the center of the being, to the light which is at your center. So it's a it's a it's a difficult thing to do, but it has to be done. That once all this comes up, it's out, and you move towards your center. First, thank you so much that I have another opportunity. I'm very grateful. It's also very good when people ask questions. You're also giving, you know, when you're doing that. Because when you ask a question, which can help also another, it contributes to this whole satsang. So it's a, it's a give and take. Yes, go ahead, ask your question. You. I heard from you that if you love him, he is your guru. Then you can ask him. I must confess, when I took the initiation, I really took it, I did not receive it. Which means, my impulse to go to this master was very much inspired by ego. Ah, uh, yes. I felt that's a famous master, I want to go there and take the initiation. It was not in a state of surrender. I was very greedy. And I was even aware that I did not meet the requirements for initiation, which were clearly set up by him. And still I asked him, for initiation. So I feel this has been an act of trespassing. There is a superimposition on this relationship by this trespassing. So it's not a clean relationship. No relationship is clean. Don't beat yourself so much. Oh yes, <laughs> but... You know what you're doing? You're trying to look for a way out of that commitment. <laughs> You're trying to say that, well, it was something I pushed through, so maybe it's not exactly, so I don't have to really, and... Yeah. This is not the way to proceed, because there's no... No relationship is clean. Mm -hmm. Every relationship has an issue and a problem and a this, and a that, and an up and a down. You don't have to beat yourself, it's fine, you have... You, you have been greedy, but your greed has been for spiritual knowledge. The thing is that people go for spiritual knowledge because of different reasons. Sometimes it's because they really, really want to know what is this life about. Sometimes they do it because they've been pushed into a corner by life and they cannot get out. They're in so much pain and so much trouble and so unhappy and so miserable and suffering that much that they can only look for a spiritual way out. And then there are those who take up a spiritual... let's say, a spiritual path because they want to have power over other people. So the question is, what was your motivation? My motivation was very much mixed up. Another thing I remember you saying is, in India you learn to bow to your parents first, and then you learn to bow to God, and then to a Guru. I have trained myself throughout my life just the opposite way. I didn't mm, love yeah. my parents, I was very arrogant even as a child. And throughout my school time I was arrogant towards teachers, towards professors and university, and even towards uh, spiritual masters. And now you're paying the price for all your arrogance. Yes. Now yes. you're all confused, what am I supposed to do now? I want to go towards the soul, but then I have to take this. I have to, see, that's where the arrogance leads you. So now don't be arrogant. Yeah. Just be relaxed. Trust. Have trust in your spiritual master. Yeah. Talk to him, tell him. You can also show him maybe a video or something. The point is, he left his body one year after I took initiation. So I cannot meet him in his body anymore. 
he's not in his body. No. Well, then he's not in his body, so there's no problem. Well, he said, when you really uh, take the initiation seriously, I will be with you no matter whether I'm in the body or not. Exactly, so he probably brought you to me. I would be very grateful if this was the case. Why do you think you're around? You came not to me some years back and you were not... you were not so uh, thrilled or what? <laughs> <laughs> well, what you were teaching in Rishika was against everything I had thought. It destroyed all my, my systems and I did not want them to be destroyed. Fully understandable, fully understandable. Don't beat yourself if the Master is not in the body. See, the difference between a Master who has left the body and a Master who is in the body is that the Master who is in the body can give you two slaps, if required. I don't mean necessarily physical slaps, it can also be just conceptual slaps, you know. But a Master who has left the body, whatever comes after that is religion, because there is no physical presence, yes, I do understand that we have connections to people who have passed away and they are beautiful connections and you should maintain that connection of love but if he's not in the body, how are you going to ask him? Will you be able to get an answer? You can ask him to tell you in your dreams, maybe you can try, if you want At least I cannot ask him because there is not this deep love relationship on my side you are not in love with anybody, that's the point. Right. And it's fine, it's okay, there are many people like that, but perhaps your time has come now to start to love yourself, because you can't love somebody else if you don't love yourself. You cannot, it's not an easy thing to just love somebody, first you have to love yourself, which is what he told you, first you have to find yourself and then you can, you know, it goes both ways. So, you have convinced yourself over your lifetime just because you have an intellectual ability that, that you actually know but knowledge is not the same thing as intellectual ability, you know and knowledge doesn't come from thinking, it comes from not thinking See what I mean? So for you the process now is to surrender, to be quiet not to try to grasp and grab and gain, but to give to give, you have to learn to give it's beautiful, it's a beautiful way to proceed I don't know if you're going to do it that is up to you but this is a chance maybe your spiritual master has brought you here you know and you should take it as a chance to reach that which is your core, your center, your truth you know then maybe you will also be able to to experience that love and to love the other That would be a blessing You also have to be very careful because you know, it's a female guru and that love cannot be a male-female thing because then you'll go in a mess again Know what I mean? Yes. You cannot see this person sitting here as a female It is a guru, it is a source of truth mm. Understand? And every time your mind goes in that direction you have to stop it because you're one of those powerful, powerful people but you have to train yourself to use your power in a way which strengthens you and not weakens you I surely wish to do that and I am aware it's a, such a difficult task It's such a beautiful experience to actually feel oneself to learn how to self-realize but you have to also make an effort and you have to give you cannot sit and sort of think you're going to find yourself you have to go into a role of giving on all levels, on all levels you have to give to the other it's not about you, it's about the other that's how you have to think and I'm saying this to you I'm not saying this to others on this satsang this is especially meant for someone like you I have a feeling that you might actually go into a very powerful process of Self-Realization but remember one thing you cannot fool me and I will catch you out on every single little thing it can be quite tough, so don't... don't get fooled because I'm smiling at you That's the best thing that ever can happen to me 
because of your intelligence you've got away with a lot in this life and now it's time to stop with all the thinking and start with the actual being, you know. And already you are probably planning out strategies of how you can outsmart me, but you won't succeed in that. You just won't, I can tell you that already. I'm not saying it out of pride, I'm just saying it to strengthen you and to help you. No, it's a promise. When you say, I won't be able to outsmart you, it's a promise. Well, it's not a promise, it's a statement of fact. <laughs> It will be all right, don't worry, don't think too much. Just do your sadhana of tuning into the Source, that's the important thing. And if your Guru is not in his body anyway, don't have to worry about it, because he probably brought you here anyway, because he thought, this guy is just that tough, that I better, you know, send him somewhere where he will be straightened out. <laughs> Namaskar. Namaskar. <laughs>